Okay, so to remove, uh, you can take the uh, rotor and caliper off if you want, but you don't need to. Uh, to remove uh, the strut, there's three bolts at the top, or three nuts to, at the top, which I'll show you. You have to remove these two <coughs> mounting bolts to the knuckle. They're uh, 20, 22 millimeter. 22 millimeter. You need to undo your brake line from the bracket on the strut, which is 12. You need to undo your uh, stabilizer link, 18 millimeter in this case, and behind here, let me pick you up and show you this. So in there, see if I can see it here, right here is a little push-in for the ABS line. You want to disconnect that as well. So we're just going to go through and do that real quick. Shouldn't take very long. Uh, before I do that, um, you want to get this back to where it should be because you, you should get an alignment or at least check for alignment when you're done after doing this. So what I do is on the front of this, I just take a screwdriver or a kick and I scribe it to the knuckle and get a mark like that. So I have a mark so I know where to put it back to. So I'll do that on this side as well, which is dark right now, but there you go. Uh, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll come in here and just I'll scribe it on the knuckle. And then when I put the new strut in, it'll get me real close to where it was. I can put it back to where it was. All right. I think uh, we'll just go with the uh, stabilizer and like here first. Uh, these, in my case, 18 millimeter. I don't know what yours is. I don't know if these are original equipment or not. I have no idea. Of course, got almost 200,000 miles on it. So, usually they will spin. You try to undo this, especially if you don't have a gun. It's going to spin on you and, and spin the whole joint. So, you just hold the flat. Hopefully you can see that. Let me see. Can you see what I'm doing? I don't know. can't see. I think you can. I'm just holding the flat. There's a flat on the behind the bracket here. Let me show you a better shot of that. Let me move it. Get you on a different spot here. So there's the... Uh, upper link of the stabilizer end link. Uh, there's flats that I can hold this with. So I'm not sure I'm getting a reverse here. I do. It's very tight. I don't know why it's so tight. It shouldn't be that tight. Wow, that's not a good start, huh? And the gun turned down? No. Nope. Which, uh, get rid of that wobble extension. It might be causing some problems there. Let's see if we can just do it that way. That's what it was. It was the wobble extension. It's tight though. Really tight. There it goes. That was really tight how tight that was but it's off okay this is kind of jammed a little there it goes it actually came out but here you can see it's got a flat on it's got flats that you can get a wrench on to hold it in place so we'll just put that nut back on there so you don't have to worry about where it is I hope it's kind of fight me a little bit I'll just push that back out of the way I'm gonna unclip my EBS sensor here, a little push in clip, just squeeze it, push it through. Just make sure it's loose. You don't want to you don't want to catch that and break it. You don't have having to put a sensor on it. You don't want to do that. I'm gonna come across here to uh, this side. Hopefully you can still see this right here. That's 12 millimeter, that's my bracket for my uh, yeah. For my brake line. Can't think of what I'm saying, but well, I'm really surprised how things are both pretty tight. Good pressure too. All right, that's loose. Now I can go with these. Uh, mounting bolts here. 
get out of your way. There's one. Go down to the bottom one now. Hopefully my hand's not blocking everything you're saying, I hope. Turn my light up here. Yeah, a little more light. Same thing here, let's reach in. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to disconnect at the bottom. See that one bolt? The bottom one came right out. It's sitting on this top one, so it's not going to move right now. What I usually do is I'll uh, put a jack underneath the lower control arm and just kind of prop it up a little bit, which I'll do, and then um, be able to uh, move this around and get this out. Always a constant battle with the light. Alright. Take my gun and just push on it as I un unscrew it here. I usually just push them right out. Just like that. Alright, so this is all loose now at the bottom. We're going to go up top now and undo the three mounting bolts the, or mounting nuts at the top. We're up right in front of the driver's side, uh, you know, cow here. There's three axis covers, just pop them out. Set them aside. And there's three nuts, studs sticking up with bolts, bolts, nuts on here. Just reach down here. Reach down in there with a magnet and get them get them done. All right, so the struts loose here. I'm just I have to wiggle it out. I may have to drop the control arm a little bit to get this out. I'm not sure. We'll see. I want to be careful of this. That's the main thing. I don't don't want to hit that and break it. I want to get this past the control this this uh, tie rod end. So I'm going to have to drop the control arm a little bit here. I think just a little. Just let it down. I'm going to push this out past so I can drop it down. Careful of your wire. I'm going to get this uh, jammed up here. Not the way I want that. Just weasel it out here, drop it in the middle here. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, it's just fighting me like crazy. Go out the front instead of the back. There you go. Now you probably couldn't see any of that, but there you go. So there's the uh, there it is, there's the whole strut out of the car. Um, these are leaking. They have leaking oil all over the place internally, so they're no good. To get that out, I had to drop the front of the, the bottom of the strut past the front of the axle, CV axle, so I can get the top out and then just take it back out of there. No big deal. I got the new one here. We're just going to unscrew the nuts from the top of it. We're going to be using them. Don't use the old ones. They're not always the same size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this in, line it up at the bottom here. It can really only go one way. Um, it's got to face out so it can uh, meet up with the knuckle. Uh, I'm going to feed this through the top and get a bolt started and fight with that. Probably shouldn't be too bad. Um, let me push it back in there here and let's see what we got. Oh. 
loose here, sitting right on the axle, just for now. So I'm going to stand up and actually do this. Uh, you won't be able to see much. I'm just going to wiggle it around. This is a little easier if you have two people, uh, but I'm going to get one of the try to get one of these nuts started on one of the the bolts up top here. Get it lined up and do that. I wanted to show you a little trick that I use. So you've got to reach down in with this. Let me get some better light. I'm trying to get you some decent light in here. I'm not having very good luck with it, but you got to reach down in uh, into that cow up top to put those nuts on. You need a way to hold them. So what you could do is just take a little piece of uh, paper towel or shop cloth like that, put it over the end of the socket, and push your nut into that. It'll now hold that for you so you won't drop it. It won't fall off of the socket when you're trying to reach down into that cow and get this started. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to push this up into place and get one of these started to hold it in place. Try to get them all started then we'll come back down here. Got one of these started. It's holding it in place. I'm going to do the other two now. Same same trick as before. A little piece of shop. Rang or paper towel. Doesn't matter. It's enough to hold it there. All right. Then bottom here again, we're just going to line this, try to line this back up. Drop my light a few dozen times while I'm doing that, hopefully. Let's see if I can, uh, I am fighting with lights today. Man, am I fighting with lights today. Uh, maybe that's a little better. Just line, try to line this knuckle back up here. Let's rotate a little forward. So, get it started here. Fight with it. Yeah, it's just, it's got to come back this way. Just fight with me. There it goes. That's better. A little better. All right. So it's got to come up because the holes are down below where they should be. That's why I have the jack under the lower control arm so I can move it up and down and get it lined up. This one, yeah, it's got to come up. See how that's above? I know it has to come up. And that's what I want to do. I'm just going to try to line these holes up. I have a long punch. I find that makes it a little easier. You get a punch in there, hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't do that on you. We're just uh, then we use a punch to kind of line it up and center it. I'll leave that in there and I'll get the bottom bolt in. I hope. See where we at here. Wiggle it around. There we go. You may have to adjust it a little bit. Just wind it back in. I don't know. Okay. Nut back on there. I'll move you when I go to tighten this up so you can see it better. Get the right size on on there. That's the wrong one. Okay, the top bolt. Should be able to get my top bolt in there now, I hope, without too much problem. Let's see. Yeah, pretty good actually. Get yeah, started. Long punch helps a lot just lining them up. Okay, we'll put that in there. I'll hook my ABS sensors, push that clip back in. Gonna get my brake line. Just set that, let's get that started. Hopefully, I'm not blocking everything you're seeing here. I hope not. Easy on this, don't snap it off if you have a gun. Snug it up. I'm gonna line my top uh, sway bar link up here. It's still gonna come up. It's gonna come up some more, so I, I lowered it down. I'm gonna bring it, I'm just gonna bring the control arm up, I'll line that up, get that in there, get that started back in place. Maybe. Not tightening that yet. Now I have my marks that I that I have that I made, and I want to 
I want to get this. There's not a lot of movement to this one. And it's actually pretty close to where it should be. Get close and then we'll tighten these back up. Alright, tighten my uh, end link here, get that in place. should get an alignment done after you have this done just to have it checked at least to make sure it's where it needs to be um, obviously I'll put the wheel back on but that's pretty much it I gotta go back up top and tighten those three bolts those three nuts at the top finish them up and that's it well that's it for this 2009 Honda Odyssey part one part two will be uh, replacing the rear shocks it has 196,000 miles on it um, and one strut in the front leaking really badly. Uh, other one leaking a little bit as well. They need to be replaced. Shocks, I don't, owner doesn't know if they've ever been done. Uh, we're going to do them as well. I'm sure they need to be replaced. Really easy job if you buy the quick strut with the whole strut already put together. I highly recommend doing that, especially if it's a high mileage car. You have uh, the mount and bearing uh, and all other, you know, parts of that strut which wear as well. Uh, and if you don't have the tools uh, to compress that spring, the springs are pretty dangerous if you don't have the right tools. Uh, you're much better off and it's much faster. Uh, the difference in time and what it saves you in time will more than pay for the difference between the whole unit and buying the strut. Pretty easy job, half an hour side, maybe a little longer, depends if you have air tools or not. Um, if you have this problem with your car, you need to do it. I hope it helps you out. If you like the videos, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.